videotape shows a series of tests conducted on two aircraft wire types to determine their susceptibility to damage from hostile projectiles. The main purpose of the tests, which were conducted at the Naval Research Laboratory's Ballistic Impact Facility, was to determine the effects of battle damage from either bullets or shrapnel on different types of wire insulation. For the test, two types of wires were used, mil w 81381 11 and mil w 22759 34 The mil w 81381 11 wire uses a polyaromatic image tape as the primary insulation. The mil w 22759 34 wire type uses a radiation crosslink modified ethylene tetrafluoroethylene insulation. For this test, wire bundles were fabricated and mounted so as to simulate conditions which are representative of standard naval aircraft construction. Electric power to the harnessed wires was provided from an NC-8A mobile electric power plant. This diesel engine powered generator with 400 hertz, three phase, 115 volts output was used to simulate an aircraft generator. The 28 volts DC converter is the type used on the F-14 with input power supplied from the AC generator. Two different types of projectiles were fired at the harness specimens. The first one was a 30 caliber ball M2 bullet weighing 152 grains. The other was a steel 30 caliber fragment simulator weighing 44 grains. The powder loadings were weight adjusted to propel each at approximately 1,000 feet per second. The first shot was a 30 caliber ball fired at the mil w 81381 slant 11 type harness. The projectile severed wires in the lower part of the harness, causing a short circuit that tripped one AC breaker. This close-up view shows the deflection produced by the impact, the carbon deposited on the painted surface, and the hole in the plate where the projectile passed through. In aircraft operations, it is a standard procedure to reset the trip circuit breakers at least one time in hopes that power can be restored to the affected electrical components, especially if they are essential to the controls. When this breaker was reset, more arcing and burning occurred which re-tripped this breaker and caused four more to trip. These were reset one at a time, and each time there was another arc which tripped it again. When the third one was reset, the arcing became more violent, with flames engulfing the bundle and more breakers tripping. As you can see, the fire continued to travel along the harness beyond the target area, and it appeared that the flames would continue and set fire to the power supply panel. Before this could happen, the main power switch was opened and the fire slowed down. However, it continued to burn in the harness for another 15 seconds. This close-up of the circuit breaker panel shows the breakers that tripped during the arcing and flaming before power was shut off. In all, there were six AC breakers and 12 DC breakers that opened up. The next harness was also shot with a 30 caliber ball. It was made up of the mil w 22759 34 type wires and cables. The procedures for this test were conducted in the same manner as previously shown for the first harness. The projectile hit the center of the harness. At the point of impact, you can see that at least one cable was severed, but no carbon formation can be seen and no circuit breakers were tripped. The harness was then repositioned to insert an undamaged section into the target area for another impact test, this time using the 30 caliber fragment simulator projectile. Upon impact, this projectile produced much greater damage to the wire harness and caused a bright arc which tripped one circuit breaker. When reached set, there was no arc and the breaker remained closed. The final test in the experiment was conducted on a new harness constructed with the mil w 81381 11 type wire of the same construction as the first one tested. Again, a 30 caliber fragment simulator projectile was fired. 
The projectile impacted near the center and broke many wires in the harness. Arcing and flames began immediately, and the fire and arcing traveled along the harness for about 10 seconds after the impact. Here the damaged section is clearly visible, and the circuit breakers that tripped as a result are shown in this view of the circuit breaker panels. There were three AC breakers and five DC breakers that tripped as a result of the impact. They were not reset and the experiment was ended so that the damaged harness could be more closely examined in the laboratory. In addition to the tests conducted at the Naval Research Laboratory, another series of bullet impact tests was conducted at the Naval Air Test Center. In these tests, the wire harnesses being shot were powered with actual aircraft generators and the complete power circuit components of the respective aircraft. The wires of the harnesses were connected to resistor loads to more nearly simulate the devices that were powered by these wires in the aircraft and were routed through the appropriate circuit breakers as seen in this panel. The first series of tests being shown here were conducted on harnesses of the mill w 81381 type of wires. This is the wire that is presently installed in approximately 80% of the Navy's aircraft. The first harness is one assembled to duplicate one of the many that are installed in the P-3 Orion aircraft. The bullet grazed the harness, short-circuiting several wires, which tripped four circuit breakers. These were reset one at a time, and this is the first one being reset. The second one was just reset. And the third one was just reset. When the fourth one was reset, the intense heat of the arc ignited insulation on adjacent wires and the combustion reaction propagated to destroy the entire harness. The next harness is from an F-18 Hornet that is also made up with mil w 81381 type wires. This has an overbraid of a fire-resistant Nomex fiber that is utilized to cover all of the harnesses of this aircraft. When the bullet penetrated this harness, the arcing fire tracked along several wires, tripping many circuit breakers. When the third breaker was reset, the ensuing fire destroyed the entire harness of 58 wires. The same harnesses were also assembled using mil w 22759 34 type wires in order to provide the comparison again between the two types of insulation. Since the first shot did not trip any circuit breakers, the same harness was reused by moving an undisturbed section into the line of fire. was observed on some of these shots, there was immediate arcing, but there was none of the intense burning and arc propagation in tests of this type of wire. There were approximately 50 wire harness shots performed at the Naval Air Test Center in a cooperative project with the Naval Avionics Center. Each shot was recorded on videotape and some were recorded with high-speed equipment by the Video and Photographic Services branches of the Naval Research Laboratory. Since the degree of damage and the number of circuit breakers tripped were dependent on the probability that the bullet would strike wires carrying power, 
there was not always a fire produced in each of the wire harnesses that were shot at. Records show that approximately 50% of the 29 harnesses constructed with Kapton wires had fire damage, similar to those illustrated. On the other hand, even though there were some circuit breakers tripped and some light arcing visible in approximately 50% of the 19 tests on the Mill W22759 slant 34 wire harnesses, none of them exhibited the severe flames and fire damage to the insulation. The results of these tests present a valid assessment of combat vulnerability of the wire insulations that were evaluated in this program, and they provide convincing evidence that MIL-W81381 type wires are not recommended for combat service.